Today I want to speak to you on the church of Laodicea. For I know that in the last days the Bible teaches there shall be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And the Bible also teaches that if it would be possible, the very elect would be deceived by those seducing spirits. I want to read you out of Joel chapter 3 verse 12. It says, Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations round about. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The vets overflow, for their weakness is great. Multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near, and the valley in the valley of decision. And we know what that means, I believe, the Bible teaches. That in the last days, the people of this earth are going to be so confused that they, when they will enter into the great tribulation, the Antichrist will bring them to a point where they will have to decide whether they want to follow God or whether they want to follow Satan. I want to read you out of Revelations chapter 3 verse 14. It, the Bible teaches the Laodicean church had everything mixed together. They had a form of godliness. They, they were bragging about how they were serving God, but in reality they did not know God. Because in Revelations chapter 3 verse 20 it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. That indicates that the church of Laodicea in reality did not know Christ even though they all claimed to know him. And it said, And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, and the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would that thou were cold or hot, so because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And this is the church of Laodicea. How many religious systems and cults have pre are dominant in all the world. Christianity, the true Christianity, the born again Christianity is just a minority anymore. People don't seem to realize what true Christianity is. The blood of Christ and the name of Christ is just a curse word and a byword with a lot of people. The church of Jesus Christ have been pushed into the background where they are ridiculed in a lot of places for being dogmatic and unloving. But God has a word in His scripture. The preaching of the cross is not to be debated as is to be preached. For the Bible teaches there is only one way of salvation and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. But the religious system, the church system, now preaches, oh, you got to be part of our religion and you got to have Christ at the same time. How many times have we heard people say, yeah, it's okay to have Christ, but we also have to have this. We also got to do that. Some of these days in the Valley of Decision, the Antichrist will destroy all religions and he will proclaim himself God and you will have to decide who you're going to worship. Will it be Christ or will it be the Antichrist? You will not be able to say, yeah, we have the Antichrist, but we can also have Christ. That will be a no-no because if you even so much as mention worshiping Christ, you will lose your head. But today that seems to be the norm. Everybody seems to be religious but lost, pretending to know God and yet in reality following Satan. 
but that will be all done away with. Once the Antichrist comes on the scene, you will have to make up your mind who you are going to worship. Will it be God or will it be the Antichrist? There's not going to be any in-between stuff there. You will be put on the spot and you will have to make a decision. That's why in Joel it says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Where will you stand when that day comes? In verse 18 it says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes of that thou mayest see. So he is telling the church of Laodicea, buy gold from me, get white raiment from me, I anoint your eyes with eyes of that thou may see, that you will see what God has in mind for you, that it's only through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and not your religious exercises that you're doing. And how many people are living in the church today pretending to be Christians and living for the devil? Well, these people will have to decide one of these days who they want to serve, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, or the world. There is going to be a valley of decision coming for everybody. But the real decision is for now. That's why he says, now buy white raiment for me, buy clothes, gold, gold for me today before it's too late, before you come to the valley of decision. And what is that white raiment that God, that the Bible teaches about? In Revelation chapter 19, it, in verse 8 it says, And the church was granted that she should be a rain in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This is what the fine linen is which God is telling you to buy. And what is the righteousness of the saints? Romans chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophet. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, up to, unto all and upon all them that believe. That is the fine linen that God is telling you to buy. It is the righteousness of the saints, which is faith in Jesus Christ. Have you decided to turn to Jesus Christ? Is the blood of Jesus Christ your only way of salvation? Or are you still depending upon your religion? Plus the blood of Jesus Christ for your salvation. Well, if you do, you will have to enter into the valley of decision where you will have to make up your mind who your God really is. Will it be the Antichrist or will it be the Lord Jesus Christ? You, There will be no in-betweens. It will be sharp as a two-edged sword. It will come down in the middle. You will ask, will the Christian enter into, into the valley of decision? Revelations chapter 3 verse 10 For those who have accepted Jesus Christ, for those who, who accept the blood sacrifice for their salvation, those who are sure that they're going to heaven and they have Jesus as their only way of salvation, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which comes upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This is the promise that God has given them, that have this fine linen now, that have this precious gold now, the, for the ones whose eyes see now, you will escape that hour of decision, that hour of temptation that comes upon this earth because you have made your decision at the cross of Jesus Christ. This is why you will escape the terrible time of decision when the Antichrist will force all people upon the face of the earth to pledge allegiance to him or be killed. 
What will your decision be today? I'm asking the Christian today. Talk to your loved ones about that terrible time that's coming. They can escape it. And even if it don't come to the point where they will go into the tribulation, how about if you die today? For everybody is a heartbeat from eternity. We can all die before the day is out. And where will you stand? The Bible teaches it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that the judgment. A terrible price will have to be paid for rejecting the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because God has set up the scriptures. He did. The scriptures will be held up at you at the day of judgment and you will be judged according to what is written in the scriptures. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you really living for Him? Is the proof of your life there that you have accepted Jesus Christ? Or is it just the mediocre way that you're living? Will you have to go into the valley of decision because no, you cannot decide for yourself right now? Well, the time is coming when you will have to make that decision if you're not sure of yourself today. I'm talking to the unbeliever today. You don't have to enter that valley of decision. You don't have to go to the lake of fire once you close your eyes in death because Jesus has made a way for you of escape and that escape is in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for the Lord Jesus Christ is willing that none shall perish and if you turn to him he will accept you into his precious kingdom which he has prepared before the foundation of this world the Lord God is willing that none shall perish that's why he sent his only begotten son here on this earth to die for you and for me. And if anybody wants to say that God is love, that he will not send anybody to hell, then look at the cross. For gee, God spared not his only son. He sent him to the cross to die for you. And if he spared not his only son, who do you think you are that he will spare you? Because somebody will have to pay for your sin. It's going to be either you or it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the two. So I'm asking you today, turn to Jesus. He did it for you. Regardless what you've been like, regardless who you are, regardless of what color your skin is, Jesus loved you. He created you. But once you make that decision for him or against him, that decision will stand throughout eternity. So make a decision for Christ today. For God so loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son here to be a living sacrifice for you that you may not perish, that you may not go to the lake of fire, but that you may enter into the kingdom of God which is eternal bliss throughout eternity in heaven. I'm asking you to turn to Jesus today for he is willing that you do not perish. Thank you for listening, for Jesus is about to come back, and all those that look for his appearing, to them will it return the second time without sin unto salvation. Today I have a message that I believe God wants me to give to the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood-bought Christians. And that message is not a new message, it's an old message that has been conveyed through to the Christian throughout the church history. And that message is that we should get to praying for the redemptions of souls of men. We should start praying that God will move amongst the people of this nation that they will get to know the Lord Jesus Christ for he is about to come back and he wants to bring to himself as many as will listen and the power of that revival that God is doing now is in the power of, of the prayers of his saints and I want to show you something out of Genesis 11 when the people of this earth got together, 
Uh, they had one language and they were going to build a tower of Babel that can reach into heaven. The Lord God came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men were building. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be able to restrain from them which they have imagined to do. So you see here, the people here in Genesis had one thing in mind. They had one language and they were one as far as unity is concerned. So God said, if they are like that already, huh, there is nothing that they will not be able to do if we will allow them co to continue. So he confounded their language. But in the spiritual realm, God has called us to unite together in prayer for the saving of the sinner. Because he says, if you do that, if we are one in, in heart and spirit, God will move and the sal salvation of many souls will become a reality. So I'm asking the Christians who are within the sound of my voice to form prayer meetings because he says where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst of it. I believe the power of prayer is the power of any ministry. If you want to do anything for God, you will have to first get on your knees and seek the face of God. Cleanse your heart from any, uh, from any evil that might be there and get serious with God and then start to intercede in prayer. Be a prayer warrior. Start prayer groups wherever you are because we are now entering into a stage where the Antichrist is about to set upon the scene and people will either become confused or they will turn to Christ and find new life in their hearts. So I believe Jesus is now calling us to this great incredible work of praying for the lost. I'm asking you Christians, wherever you are, unite in prayer, be as one. Don't be selfish about your prayer. Don't think about your little group, but think of the salvation of the people who are around you and all around us that they need to get to know the Lord Jesus, regardless of what church they will attend, but that they will find Christ. I'm asking you today, pray for people. Pray for your loved ones. Get together and reach out to God in a united prayer for the salvation of people's souls. And God will answer these prayers because he says, one will put a thousand to flight and two will put ten thousands to flight. That is talking about the enemy here. So God has given us the ammunition. Let's use it. Unite together. Respect one another and pray for the human being that is lost and on his way to hell. You have potential, you have power, and God is urging you to use what he has given you.